Welcome to Wellness with Plants, brought to you by the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. I'm your host, Sean Ridley. Our next guest spent almost a lifetime struggling with weight issues, but it was severe problems with type 2 diabetes that gave him a wake-up call that major changes were needed. When he reached a breaking point, it was his mother who introduced him to a whole food plant-based lifestyle. Dan has since become a graduate of the CNS Plant-Based Nutrition Certificate program and is now embarking on a new venture in the plant-based world. Here to share his story today is Dan Caraciolo. Thank you so much for being here, Dan. Hey, Sharm. Hey, guys. Hey, everyone listening. Thanks for, thanks for joining. Really excited to be here. Thank you. So let's start off by your giving us a brief background of your health issues that mm. you've encountered. Yeah, you know, um, about four and a half years ago, um, I was approximately 350, 360 pounds and really struggling um, with like numbness and some, and, and just, you know, un, and just being inflamed, you know, very heavy and had been a long time. Um, over the years, I've been dieting a lot. You know, when we converse on sort of my story lately, I've been talking about how when I was a kid, a long time ago, we used to play football, I used to work with, I'm sorry, I used to play with older kids in order to make weight, which so as a young eight-year-old, I was playing on a 10-year-old team. Um, at that same time, mom was sort of uh, always trying to lose that extra 20 pounds, I think, you know, and we would go to uh, like these cooking kind of workshop classes together. She would take me. And we would go to a church basement and we would talk about food, if you will, in a, in a diet environment. I say sometimes they're like the physical Facebook groups of today, but they are, they were, you know, a church basement, a rectory basement that 30 people got together and explained their struggles with, with food. <clears throat> so, you know, um, over the years, I meet my beautiful wife, um, we have children and a uh, beautiful Two beautiful girls and you know we we just eat what we're taught what we've been taught eating and um in that same environment i start um developing a career and i work in banking today in corporate banking and you know i, I start covering corporate clients that have um that are all over geographically new york city tri-state area and what do you do when you do those things? You have an eight o'clock meeting, you have a 1230 lunch and you have a dinner and like you have those three or four days a week sometimes. And on top of traveling around um, from one client to another. So you're eating out of your car, you're, you know, you're definitely going through a lot of uh, fast paced sort of for service professional kind of environment. <clears throat> so um, around 2017, pretty heavy. Um, my mom gets sick, has her fourth, no, third heart attack. But this one is where she has to um, be airlifted from one hospital to another hospital to have a surgery where they put her veins in her legs into her heart, actually, and save her life like that. Um, helicopter and all. So I fly down to Florida after this happens, you know, kind of work on her recovery a little bit. And, you know, and, and co not coaching her, but learned like, like work, checking in on her over her recovery. Uh, her cardiologist recommends a plant-based diet at the end, toward the end of 2017. And he's even starting like his own like journey of, of this in, in Orlando. And mom is just sort of now rekindled that like group setting again in person, right? That she knows very familiar with. Um, and she starts going to these sort of workshops and like classes that, the, that they're all trying to just learn what plant-based eating is about five years ago. And, um, and then I get sick at the end of 2017, um, and I fall into a little diabetic coma, um, if you will, um, or, or perhaps the beginning of one, like, you know, six, 700 blood sugar, um, you know, constant urination, sleeping and and drinking water, basically. I mean, so 48 hour episode, um, you know, turns into metformin daily and diagnosis and like endocrinologists, like leading up appointments, 
even thinking about like bariatric surgery um, at that point. And mom's doing their thing. And she's sort of like, I don't know, like I'm, I'm starting to eat better, eating more lentils. You know, we love lentils, you know, kind of thing. You know, I make grandma's lentil soup. Like we should look into this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So, you know, I'm eating grilled chicken and trying to push forward. Um, <clears throat> and then towards the end of March of 2018, I have a, I have like a little bit of a minor episode again in the office. I mean, at this time in the office, it's caught by a colleague of mine who was sort of a fatherish figure to me. And he was like, threw me into an office, private office. And he was like, what's going on? Are you healthy? Like, are you sick? Like I can tell something's wrong. And at the time I was like rubbing my hands a lot, you know, and I, cause we type a lot on when, you know, for what we do, we do our weekly, you know, reports, if you will. So end of the week is Fridays are usually an office day. So I'm in the office and I'm having like really feeling lousy. I'm having like that same feeling where I'm constantly going to the bathroom and Nick, and Nick my, my colleague, you know, reaches out to me and he's like, get out of here, go home and get, do something this, you know, like figure it out. And I just like, Talked to my mom again. I texted her about it. Well, I was feeling, and she sent me a link for a, vi a YouTube video that was the that night. That was the 19 or 20 minute video. It was a TEDx from Neil Bernard from like 19, 2014, maybe. And it was, I think, it was called a bold new dietary approach to type two diabetes. And he talked about it being an epidemic. And I was like, that makes a lot of sense. Why has no one ever said that type two diabetes is an epidemic? You know, like how many of us have it? Like, or have been told like that we like definitely should be treated as an epidemic. It's not given that we know about COVID and everything as far as like what these all, what these, uh, you know, pandemic, endemic, what these all means. Why is this not an epidemic like this? And in that video, there's a lot of discussion on like jaw lines. I don't know if you've seen it before. And it, it just was sort of like, that's where my intuition started like clicking a little bit there. And I was like, okay, I've done diets before for 30 years, right? I've known how to lose 25, 40, 50 pounds, no problems. Um, I need to lose a lot more now, but like I've done this before and a diet's a diet. So, and I like lentils and I like food and mom did teach me how to cook and, and luckily learned how to follow recipes, which I think has been the real important thing here. It's following step-by-step -step recipes, knowing some of those spices in those recipes, having them and, you know, being able to, you know, kind of put stuff together step-by-step. -step. Right. So when you, when you watch this video from Neil Barnard, um, mm -hmm. is that what did it for you? Is, is when did you actually decide to follow this lifestyle? It took 48 hours to accept that message but it was that weekend it was friday night i watched the video and sunday night i had my last meal with with, with me in it and and that's pretty much why you that's pretty much why you have this celebration every year around this time huh you're right the beginning of the beginning of quarter two if you will i always have like a very kind of like vulnerable moments i guess this week because i do remember that second episode, thinking about it hard that weekend, you know, um, my wife and my family had no idea what it, it really meant, but they had seen me diet before and struggle with my weight in a lot of ways. So they knew that like, I was willing to, to engage in something like this. And, um, I guess in my own ADHD, when I get focused, I get a little, I get passionate. So, um, you know, that's sort of what happened. And I was really, and then it became, more it became more it just became like a learn an unlearning thing for me because right i mean we talked a little bit about that once before where it transitioned thanks thankfully i don't say thankfully it's really bad uh adjective but like because of joy floyd um and and some and some stuff that happened there in social justice in 2020 with covid you know it just became very evident to me that like i've learned things and I can unlearn them and relearn things and it's okay. And people love me because I'm me. Um, and, and that's the best part of like, finding people, you know, and having people in my life that, that do support me and love me holistically. So, and even though she, things have changed, you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, so that's been really kind of unlearning kind of piece where food has really opened up the world for me in a lot of ways where like we need to continuously be learners actually, you know, in food and in life and in, in general. Um, 
So, so yeah, so it's been, it's been a nice thing. Mom, mom did not maintain it, believe it or not. A few people have asked, she does eat plant-based, but not, not hundred percent plant-based. Like maybe everybody wants everyone to, but, um, and I think, I think that's another learn lesson that I'd like to just, you know, the kind of, uh, just put out there is like, it's okay what everyone's choices are in this, in this journey. This is a journey. This is a lot of unlearning for people, right? Food is culture. It is, it is society. It is, it's complicated and we cook it simply too, right? So it's very, it's, it's, it's science and math and history and education in one, in, in, in um, you know, in art too. So it's very complicated, but like I always been saying, it can be very simple. That's how I try to eat very, very, very simply nowadays. Um, you know, and clean as possible. So it's, it's, I'm still, I'm, I'm still amazed by the, by the lifestyle and like some of the plants I've never tried. Did you know I tried a buzz button flower? Have you ever heard of one, a buzz button flower before? It looks like a little tiny pineapple, right? And you chew it and it, it likely is where Novocaine came from, <laughs> but it, it's edible and it has this like grand sort of like like journey of taste where like it tastes like a flower that you would normally chew if you if you thought would get grass and then like all of a sudden it changes your entire mouth structure of, of taste and that's what i really like about food and about plants is like like my my palate has been shifting a little bit you know, in, in this. So, so yeah, so very. Yes. And many, many people have mentioned that they've tried more things since going plant-based than they ever have before. And, and that's just amazing when you, so when you first started going plant-based, how was that transition? Was it difficult yeah. for you? Sure. So the transition, I definitely was difficult. I wanted, I don't want to sugarcoat it. Like it was difficult because it was like, like challenging, but but like it is just fruit and vegetables and grains, which we know. Like it was so it's not like it was like it should be easy. But like so what somebody said to me once was the best advice. And I give this advice all the time and I wish I knew who told me. So if you know and you're listening, reach out. I'll give you credit. Um, double up on your sides was the best advice that I got in the beginning, right? Which was if you have a baked potato, eat two of them. If you have an apple and peanut butter and that's what you like, eat two of them. If you have a double dose of broccoli, you know what I mean? Like, like, like double down on your normal sides dishes and, and then eating plant-based is very, very easy. And then you'll start to see, you don't need to have like strong, like plate where that is ancillary. Um, and, and, you know, and if you really read even the dietary guidelines out there put on by the federal government, we're talking about meat, like maybe even this size, right? Of the, like a fist size, like, which is three, six ounces tops. So, so yeah, so, so much more um, focused on doubling down on your sides in the beginning. And the transition for me is I did find um, a supermarket locally that is a regional one that had ventured into a vegan deli in so it was easy so i could go there and get sweet potatoes baked already you could go there and get some noodles and get some broccoli that's already cooked that you just have to reheat so supplementing my cooking was f trying to find that and, and that was an easy crutch until i hit the instagram once i hit instagram and i found all the chefs there that have beautiful food and I started following them and I started putting my own food out and I started, people started to appreciate like a little bit of a story plus, plus the actual beautiful food. And it, that's when the, that's when things really started to change, I think for, for me and the page and my blog too. So. That's wonderful. Yeah. And, and uh, tell us about your transformation, your, your weight, <laughs> your, the diabetes, the labs. Yeah, so pushing pushing 10, 10, 10 a, 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 H1ACs in the beginning. Um, I'm under four seven now consistently every ninety days. I mean, yeah, I get it. I do get checked every ninety days. Um, still, um, one thing too, I did have a vegetarian friendly doctor. 
I won't deny some of the opportunity and privilege that I did I do have. Um, he was he was open to it. He was like, anything's going to be better actually than what you're doing right now. So the fact that you're eating more healthy food is great. You know, I eat that way too, but I eat a little fish once in a while and like a little bit of eggs. Like he was, so having that, knowing that he was okay with that, I, I see some of that struggle in, in some of the groups that we're in where people wish that doctors were a little bit more, um, you know, supportive of it. And I think that's, that's part of our mission in the new venture that you mentioned. And, and so, you know, to, to kind of reeducate that, that side of things. So hopefully we'll get there. Yeah, and, and and how how about people around you? Um, how did they react when they when you? It was obvious that you were making health improvements. Um, well, yeah, I definitely you know definitely a lot of accolades. I mean, I've lost 160 pounds. I went into a, a fitness journey separately um, that I found you know group fitness was a way that really helped me you know kind of parallel the weight loss where. As a social person, you know, having group fitness was, was a lot of fun where you can rely on others, you can show up and work out hard. Um, so, um, you know, seeing the side-by-sides, you know, what really was interesting was seeing customers before COVID, like for like three months from in between, we used to do a lot of face-to-face and they'd be like, man, you look great. Like, and I'm just like, oh, and you know, you see all your family and your friends like that you see every day and like now they don't really recognize it as much, you know, but like all of a sudden you walk into someone who hasn't seen you in four months and they're like, oh, like, what are you up to? Like, what are you doing? Like very much. And then, you know, you kind of like develop almost an elevator pitch on like how, how you explain, like how you eat and stuff like that. And then, um, and then, you, you know, you do look good, you get some new clothes, you know, it does happen and you put yourself out there a little bit, maybe, and, you know, it's a little side by sides and, and, you know, it just snowballed a little bit. So, yeah. But. Yeah. Well, what are some habits that you've developed to help you with your success? Um, I'm pretty, I would say habit wise, I, uh, consistency is, is more important than like accuracy. Right. So if you think about that, like, you know, um, scheduling weekly stuff, daily stuff is super important. It's super important. Um, knowing when you're going to, knowing when you want it in the beginning, when you want to shop, right? Like it could be simple. So, so, and uh, my consistency changes. Now that seems kind of interesting, but it's more of my calendar consistency, if you will, and how I work my time if you will, changes in the process. So, um, so what I would do, so does that mean meal prep? It doesn't necessarily mean meal prep all the time, but I have meal prepped because it, I needed to meal prep when it was time to meal prep for me in the, in the journey. And I don't do it a lot still. I do a little bit of overnight oats and chia seed pudding on a meal prep side, but during the journey, when I knew I had to be at work at five o'clock in the morning or the gym at five o'clock in the morning, and so on, like I was flexible in that prep where I, I had to work when I had to work and now I'm okay. And, and, you know, like I can cook on the spot a little bit easier um, and, and, and so on. So, yeah. And you've learned from so many resources. You told us about the TEDx with Dr. Barnard um, and you also are a graduate of the plant-based nutrition certificate. What made yep. you decide to take that course and how was that experience? So that was great experience. And there was something driving me to that course when I first heard about it. And I was like, you know, as a corporate banker, but I find myself like an accidental one sometimes because I didn't go to school for this. I joke around with it. It's a nice way to build rapport in this space. I was a communication major um, and uh, took advantage of some opportunities um, over the last couple of years. But, but because of that, we educate ourselves in the bank all the time. Like we are on trainings, we are on, you know, we have to be updated with regulations, things change. So I know that education, I've always known that education and like myself is important. So in November, in early, I'm sorry, late 2020, um, we started, I started seeing some grumblings about net zero emissions in the bank and about sustainable finance. And 
Um, knowing that I had heard that the CNS program had um, some agriculture components to it, um, I felt like it was important to go back to school and invest in myself. So I brought I bought a gift for myself for 2020 Christmas, which was which was this this program. And I went through it like the 500 level course that it is like very, very kind of like, you know, naive and re written like and went through it. And I didn't recognize all the global at the time, you know, I didn't really I knew the food. I knew why. Right. I knew the theories, you know, I could I start, I read a couple of Gregor and, and, and I follow um, a couple others, you know, all the, all the guys in the space and a couple of doctors on Instagram. And um, so I felt like um, I had that covered. But the first third of that course was where I got my money's worth in that course, which is the opposite of the food. It's all the animal agriculture part of that and that was a really unlearning moment um for me and saying okay so i finance all that on the other side now and if we're going to do sustainability we're going to be sustainable finance if we're going to add legal structure into loan documents so you know clients are better borrowers when it, and green borrowers it it might and it might make sense for me given that no one else is corporate vegan banker in the space and i like to work with brands I, i'm a brand i work with brands as a banker and there's a lot of cool brands that are coming in the space and i felt like ambitions would align and it was we we hit it we've been really busy in the last 15 months since it happened where i kind of combined my linkedin and my instagram and became you know there's a lot of vegan private equity there's a lot of plant-based you know movement happened but there isn't anybody on the other side of the bank saying like, Hey, actually, I know I'm going to drive this for you and get it through credit because we believe in it that much. Right. That's what I wanted to, to deliver. And that's why I got the, the, uh, the, the certificate it's turned into a really good component for what we're, what we're doing now post bank, um, you know, but, um, and setting up for, but, but that's okay. Um, and, you know, and, but it's, so it's, it's just been, it's been a really great, blend because I, I do work in the agriculture market in in banking which is unique right so i work in a food and beverage vertical um so i felt like that no one else would do that and i wanted to be pioneering yeah, you know that is wonderful uh share with us some non-scale victories mm -hmm. you encountered um you know, things like, that, that like, like tying just... my shoes is huge what still today tying my shoes probably the biggest one um, some non-scale victories, um, seatbelts on airplanes, um, big non-scale victory there. Um, I would say jumping a fence today, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, being able to jump like a six foot fence on my own. Um, I, that would be one, you know, stuff like, um, you know, even competing in some things that I have competed in. I mean, I have done some triathlons and um you know some extended like cardiovascular events that were more that like like a vegan did that kind of meant you know like a like a four hour row or or so, like a like a on, on a rowing machine and like being like so i've so those have been all non-scale victories right um clothing has been nice um, I don't deny that. I mean, I remember my mom saying once when I was a kid, if you lose the weight, Dan, I'll buy you a whole new world. Like she was like, I was like 12, right? And like, you know, uh, loving, loving the mall basically for the first time. And she was like, if you do this the right way, I'll buy. And so now I just did it myself, actually, you know, like, <laughs> so, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, I mean the scale, but the scale was a big part of it too actually it was and you become a slave to it so you know it, and it i still have one i still i weigh myself daily still actually but i'm not a slave to it anymore like you know and i'm not worried about a number or getting down to a specific number i did have to get to that number go down below that number and then go back up of it <laughs> <laughs> to recognize that like it's okay to be sustainable at 150 pounds lost and not 162 you know like that stuff is okay you know and like i'm comfortable i'm more comfortable in my own space there um 
but yeah, a lot, a lot of other stuff too that I, I have posted about, um, you know, slipping into, you know, a, um, like, you know, just like just moving sometimes is, is just different. It's been different. Like, you know, so you have the same, man? you have the same feeling there too, or a little bit tying your shoes. You were, you were agreeing on tying your shoes. So. Yeah, well, just about everything you've mentioned, many of the guests have mentioned those exact same thing. things from the seat belts to the airplanes and so on. And you know what? Not only the seat belt, but if you've been a, uh, a, a person with a very large stomach in front of your seat belt, having the not having your stomach in touching your the, the actual uh, steering wheel, uh, you know, where like it would rub against the bottom of my stomach. Um, often, you know, that it just feeling that like not there is, is another one, you know, too. Yeah, totally. Interesting how driving does that. So, yeah. Now you, you've had a love for cooking all your life. Your, your mother instilled that in you. How has this factor, uh, influenced your, your eating? Um, you know, it, it's been, it's been very impactful. Well, it's been impactful twofold. It's been impactful because like everything I've made has tasted really good to me. There hasn't been much that I haven't been upset with and like kind of 86, you know? So that's been struck that, and I stick with what I like in the spice standpoint and so on. So it's not too, doesn't deviate too far, but eating this way and cooking, learning how to cook and knowing how to cook has made me more curious about other cultures, foods, without a doubt. Without a doubt, I'm the only white man in the Chinese or uh, the Asian market in Queens who doesn't know how to speak anything, but is like looking at food and like, that looks like good. I could do that three things with it, you know, and I'll buy that. And I don't know what it says, but I can tell, I can probably figure that out. Like I've done that, like with like, like Japanese eggplants or like, you know, different types of fruits, different types of mushrooms, for instance, you got into mushrooms that way through the Korean market. So being being unafraid of culture, um, in 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 that has been a really good catalyst to get food that I like, like chickpeas. I love chickpeas so much. I try, but I eat black chickpeas. I eat white chickpeas. I eat brown chickpeas. I eat all different types of chickpeas, not just the white ones in hummus, um, because the other ones are more fibrous, actually, and a little bit more protein too. If we're talking about you know the way that everybody wants us to think in the macronutrient side so so just trying different foods and spices and stuff like that has been really like kind of interesting you know yeah and and that's a wonderful segue into my next question because you're in the process of taking your plant-based knowledge and your passion for cooking in a whole whole new level here uh talk to us about your new project sure so this is plant daddy so very exciting about it um it's complicated just like me, but it's, it's great. Um, so when I thought of when I, so I know I introduced, I'm going to introduce you to my business partner, Daniel, who, um, and I met right before COVID actually. So let's say towards the end of 19, I'm sorry, towards the end of, yeah, towards the end of 19 is when we met physically a couple of months, we were chatting and then COVID happened, but our relationship developed on social media privately, if you will. Um, and it was, it was through somebody kind of like yourself, um, who in a different group who was like, I think you guys know, it should know each other and you live close and you're both named Daniel. Like, here you go. Like they were like, at least if would introduce us. So Daniel has an interesting, general, very same story as mine, parallel years, even same time, 175 pounds, whole food plant-based, but he did a kosher, right? He did a kosher in a tough in a tough New York City kosher market, if you will. And um, he makes beautiful food. And we started following each other when we met. And I was inspired by his some of his food, some of the stuff I was trying and putting out there. He was very inspired. And wouldn't it be great if we started something together, you know, kind of given, given our names, our first names, and sort of like what we stand for. And we both like the idea of breaking down stigmas in general, right? So you know, given in his own community, you know, kosher and being kosher and eating meat is very communal. It's very ritualistic and it's very built within, within the religion. So to do, to do vegan plant-based kosher, you know, that is very exciting, you know, in, in a lot of ways. 
So we thought about things really long, right? We thought we really were talking about like, what is the macro side of this? What's the, I, you know, I'm seeing, we both have experienced the, mic the micro side of this with our families. Our families are not 100% plant-based. You know, we have, we're two white dads, you know, who have, who just eat plant-based and vegan when we dine out. And, but at the same time, as dads, like we want to be communal, right? And we want to make sure our families are protected, our communities are protected, and our people are protected. So that was important in the Plant Daddy's mission, because if we're going to, we're going to try to, you know, put the food out that we would normally eat, we would also want to be impactful, like both of us wanted to be impactful. So Plant Daddy's exists as, as a as a kitchen that just sh never sh have existed before, but should have like a teaching community kitchen that is also a business and a wholesaler and, you know, and can, and can compete, you know, with, uh, with some of the to go mindsets of the world. So the, all the healthy eateries out there, if you're listening and, and, um, some hospitals and some, those things, being able to provide those type of establishments with to go ready up plant-based meals, like we said earlier, that you can supplement like in, into your normal cooking. So that would be the idea of Plant Daddy's. But at the same time, we're conforming retail space. We're a vegan kitchen for, for your bridal showers that aren't existing any, uh, right now. That right, your, your graduation parties. Everyone keeps telling me, my, my cousin's vegan, my niece is vegan, she's 16. Well, she's gonna get married soon. She's gonna have you know, she, everything in that space. And she's gonna want to somebody that has a unique space that that is her boundary, if you will, and and so Plant Daddies will be um, you know kind of a, a really unique space that we do wholesale. We're trying to supplement the, the ecosystem, but at the same time, um, we recognize that there's consumer needs for it also, and we want to conform to consumers where we teach, or we you book us privately and we just cook for you like a normal place, like you know, and, and a little bit of a unique atmosphere, very upscale. Um, my wife is a brilliant interior designer and really putting some real awesome fine touches on the space. We've been, you know, kind of studying these things over the years together. And I think, I think we're really excited about, um, you know, doing this, adding some, some complicatedness to a plant-based, you know, business, you know, considering one of the ones that we I've worked with in the past. Um, and we've got some really good, um, exciting stuff happening with some people from New York City coming out and really um, interested in in us and, and so on our story a little bit so we're at the precipice though I call you the basement charm so maybe this you're uh, you're in the basement with us here um, at Plant Daddy's but we're very excited um, about this venture and, and we would like to replicate this where people can enjoy the space locally in their own communities um, you know where this kind of like safe space kitchen exists um, in, uh, eventually. That is that is exciting. Yeah. And, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this is going to develop. We will definitely uh, put uh, some information sure. about this in the mm -hmm. um, description mm -hmm. uh, of, of this video. One last question sure. for you. Um, what advice would you give to someone who has health issues, possibly even severe obesity, and is just starting out, what advice would you give that sure. person? I would, I would think about what you like. I would think about what you physically can take taste-wise, right? And start there. If it's broccoli, and if for whatever reason you just like broccoli and you've always liked broccoli, just start with that, with what you like instinctually, actually. And, and just build building blocks on top of that thing. So if you like broccoli and you also like rice, eat broccoli and rice, right? If you, if you just like sweet potato, like my wife will tell you, I, I was on a sweet potato kick for two years and I, I would call her up and leave my office and say, I need a sweet potato. Can you put one in? I'll be home in 45 minutes. And she put a sweet potato in the oven for me at 350. And by the time I got home, I would have my sweet potato. So, so, and, and it was great. And I had a little bit of lentils with it or whatever. And it was just because it was what I liked, what I could cook and my boundary again. So I would just fall into that intuition. It's okay. I say now, I sometimes I charm, I, I feel like I need an orange. I feel like I need to eat some citrus, like in that intuition, if you will. 
So I think we all have it. I do. I think we all know a little bit. We just don't trust ourselves, actually. But we should. We should. So just your taste buds are right. So taste. So eat what you like in that space, in the whole food place, and then just build on what you do like. You know, you like some mustard. Eat mustard and broccoli if that's the case. You know, like it's fine. No one's going to judge you. Right. It's all in your mind a little. So maybe your kids will make fun of you like they do here. But but uh, <laughs> but ultimately, you know what I mean? Like it's just fall fall within what you really like. And I and I think that's that's been what I'm here at in the last, you know, um, in, in, in the space. And luckily for me, I don't mind tasting things. So I like a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that is definitely some sound advice. Uh, just pick what you like and build from there. Well, Dan, Absolutely. thank you so much for being on the show today. We appreciate your Thanks time and the best of uh, everything as far as your future endeavors are concerned. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.